Welcome. Today we'll be discussing medical terminologies. Now, there are millions of medical terms, many of which do not have English roots. And these medical terms would oftentimes have good root words, they will have word parts. The challenge for new um, medics of all sorts is usually how to remember what these um, terms mean. It could really be difficult to remember every single time if one wants to go by the route of um, memorization or cramming. The best bet is to understand um, and be able to analyze this word. That way one will be able to decide and understand virtually every word every medical thing that is mentioned to you. To begin, all um, medical terms, most medical terms have Greek or Latin origin. It's only a few that have English origin. Many of them are from Greek or Latin root words. And there are five basic word parts. There is a root word, that talks about the organ of interest. There's the suffix, there's the prefix, then there's the combining vowel that allows you to bring two root words or allows you to bring a root word and a suffix. Then there are also combining forms. Root words, this, this is the base word the organ of interest, the body part that is of interest when that term was coined. Example is cardi, talks about the heart. Example is myo, talks about the muscles. Example is gastro, talks about the guts. And sight, talks about the bladder, could also talk about the cell. Okay, a medical term can have one or more root word. Example is cardi o thoracic. This is pertaining to the heart and the chest. Cardi means heart, thoracic means chest. And of course, the O in the middle is a combining vowel, as you'll come to see later on. Now, what are suffixes? These are word endings. And they usually would indicate a procedure, a condition, the disorder in question, or the disease that is being discussed. And when you have a suffix, you read from the suffix backwards to the root word. Some common suffix are itis, logi, ectomy, emia. So if I have um, appendicitis, Itis is talking about an inflammatory state of the appendix. If I, if I have cardiology, logi is a Latin word meaning logo, log, logia, from the root word logos, which is a study or a discourse on something. So cardiology then will mean, cardi is known to be a root word for heart. Logi then will be the study of the heart and its structures. Ectomy is a Greek word that means remover. So um, if you hear appendectomy, it means a removal of the appendix. So when you have a suffix, you will read backwards. So there is a remover of what? In this case, the appendix. Then prefaces are word beginnings and they would usually indicate the location, the time or the number that has to do with the body part in question. So some example of prefixes. Now it's important to know that not all medical words will have prefixes. Some example will be anemia. An is a prefix. Emia is blood. Anemia means no blood, which for us means reduced blood level. Intra means within. Intra-abdominal, within the abdominal cavity. Hyper means increased, exaggerated, higher than normal. Hypertension will mean increased tension. Hypo means reduced. 
less than normal. Hypotension will mean reduced tension. Now, for combining vowels and forms, a combining vowel will usually link two word parts together. And the commonest one is O. It has no meaning of its own. So combining form will have a root word plus a combining vowel. These two together is a combining form. The O alone is a combining vowel. So if I have leuk as regards white cells, O is just a vowel that means nothing. It allows this word leuk to be easily said as leuko. Whatever you then had behind it as a suffix is easily pronounced like leukocytosis, cardiology, gastrotomy, osteophytes. Then um, the general rules for using combining vowels because it is not just inserted anywhere. When the ending of the root word and the beginning of the suffix are both consonants, you would use a combining vowels. What do I mean? You have a word here, imat, which means blood. And you have another word here, logi, which means logos, study, discourse. To say imat logi would sound weird because T is a consonant and L is a consonant. The combining vowel O will then come in here as hematology. The second rule is that when you have the ending of the word as a consonant and the beginning of the suffix is a vowel, you do not use a combining vowel here. Here we have gastro, then we have itis. There's no need for a combining vowel in the middle here. What you just have is gastritis. Then, before I continue, it's also important that um, when you're spelling, especially when you have words combined, it's important not to switch letters. One wrong letter could mean an entirely different place in the body or an entirely different test to be done. Example is ileum and helium. Ileum is a bone in the pelvic region. This other ileum is a part of the intestine. Still on the rules for using combining vowels, the third one is that a combining vowel is always used when two root words are joined together. The example I used earlier was cardi thoracic. The combining vowel in this case is O to allow these two root words to be easily joined and to be easily said, easily pronounced. A prefix does not require a combining vowel. Epi is the prefix. It's telling you something about this root word gastric. Epi means on top, above. Gastric means gut, stomach. Epigastric would then mean on top of the stomach. There's no need for a combining vowel here. You would not say epigastric sounds monotonous. So here there will be no need generally once you have um, a prefix like hypertension or you have anemia. You do not say anemia. No, it is anemia. The prefix is the an. The emia is the parts of the body of interest, which is the blood cells, red blood cells in this case. So anemia is uh, no blood literally, but it means reduced blood levels. So now when it comes to taking terms apart, one can decipher a medical word, a medical word's meaning by looking at the component pieces, and you do this in order. The first is to start at, at the suffix, which is at the end. All medical terms would have a suffix. Either it ends with itis, it ends with ik, it ends with logi, it ends with emia, it ends with just one thing. So then after identifying the suffix and what it means, 
one would then identify if there is a prefix. You know, I mentioned earlier, it's not all medical terms that will have a prefix. Then locate the root word. There may be more than one. What's the root word in this case? So we example is myocarditis. You have myo, you have cardi, you have itis. Myo and cardi. Those are root words. Itis is the suffix. So combining these three words together then lets you know that myo muscle, cardi heart, itis inflammation. So this is like an inflammatory condition of the muscles of the heart. So just a little a little bit of self-assessment. Let's see if you can break this down. I will do it, but just try and also do it um, as you're watching this and see if you can break it down. So we have endo and we have cardion. Endo is within. Cardi is the heart. Helm is just a suffix. So this then tells you within the heart. Ipo is a prefix. It means less than. Tamia is temperature. Hypothermia will then mean low temperature. Brady is a prefix. Nia is the root word. Root word in this case is a literal word. We can literally translate it to mean breathing or breath. Brady a prefix meaning reduced. So bradypnea would then mean reduced breath or reduced respiratory rate. So psychoneuroimmunology sounds like a mouthful, but it's just four words. There is psych. O is the combining vowel. You have neuro, you have immune, and you have logic. O here yeah, is also a combining vowel. Psych has to deal with the mind. Neuro has to deal with the brain. Immune has to do with, deal with the immune system. And logic has to do with study, discourse. So psychoneuroimmunology will then be a term describing the relationship between the mind, the brain, the immune system. So a study that discusses the relationship between these three entities. So apnea is a word that you may also want to break down. Ah, generally in medical term we mean no, not, without, an absence of something. Apnea will mean breath or breathing. So apnea will then mean without breath or no breathing. Thank you very much. I think that ends our presentation for today. Have a wonderful day. Bye.